Melphagor must be stopped before his dark conquest is complete. Gather your companions and muster your courage. All your cunning and might will be needed for the challenge ahead. Decide the fate of the world and who will ascend to the Blood Throne. Hey everybody, my name is Reese. I'm the lead game designer for Blood Throne. I'm here at Play On Studios and I'm so excited to show everybody this amazing game. Lead game designer Reese Robbins from Frontline Gaming, Nick and JT are here to play. They are pumped, primed, and ready to dive right in. Hey everybody, it's JT. I get to play Blood Throne today. Man, oh man, am I excited for this. This game is super exciting because it's a tactical RPG, something you do not see very often in the board gaming space. This is a prototype version of the game to show you how much fun you can have playing. The game aids, dice and such are still being refined and upgraded, so will look more polished in the final shipped version. We are showing a selection of the models coming in the starter box, which will contain 14 heroes and 27 monsters, including Belphegor himself. Over 20 color pop-up terrain pieces and no assembly required for terrain or models mean you get to play right away. An exciting new board game. For one to seven players ages 12 and up, Blood Throne is a tabletop tactical RPG that will satisfy fans of D&D, XCOM, Gloomhaven, Final Fantasy Tactics, Fire Emblem, and even Dark Souls. Fully realized with beautiful models made by the masters at Creature Caster, Blood Throne was created and play tested by Reese and the Frontline Gaming team to deliver a fun, fair, brand new, but familiar experience. Expect quarterly updates in the free player support app. Blood Throne hurls you into do or die action, base building, character creation and leveling, purchasing powerful items, a fully fledged cooperative PvE campaign, and tense and nuanced player versus player action, all in the starter box. The value here is impressive. You are getting a ton of game, a host of fantastic miniatures, and a great introduction to the lore of the world of Chael. So we're jumping in sort of in the middle of the campaign. It's a do or die scenario. The team of fantasy commandos has to go and accomplish their mission or we're gonna lose the entire campaign. We're gonna be playing the heroes at level three so that we can test out a little bit more of what they have to offer. This is a game by gamers for gamers, but enough of me talking about it. Let's look in as JT, Nick and Reese have leveled up and are preparing the next phase of their campaign. The army of the last accord needs help defeating the terrible forces of Belphegor. Heroes from a variety of backgrounds gather to complete quests that push back the darkness, build up their base, level up, and ultimately challenge the Lord of Sacrifice, Belphegor. Reese, welcome to the Play On Studio. We're excited to do this. We are progressing through our campaign of Blood Throne. We're late in the campaign, and this is a very key mission. So we have one turn left on the clock, so if that hits zero, we lose and we have to start the campaign over. So time is running out for us to save the world, us heroes. This is one of the most important missions and the way it works in the campaign, these come up and if you accomplish them, you buy more time for the army of the last accord, that's like the Alliance army, to keep doing what they're doing. If your heroes get hurt in a game, they're not available in the next game. If they play too many games in a row, they get tired. Now if we fail this mission, we lose. Our players have picked characters from the starter set for this mission specifically. They can only pick members of the party who are not injured, exhausted, or dealing with a crisis. For this mission, because it's so important, I decided to take the party leader, and that is Inquisitor Kalth. Now, he is an evil character, sort of a Doctor Doom type figure, and he's organized everybody to do his whim. He is also extremely good at stopping other monsters from using their special abilities. Inquisitor Kalth, an Inquisitor for the Immortal Host, this villain has his own reasons to stop Belphegor. A healing potion is a great choice and lets him operate without direct support. And then I've also taken Carr Bjornsson. He's a shaman from the Northern Tribes. He can summon a war bear. He has all kinds of buffing magic. Carr Bjornsson is a summoner with lots of utility and grabs a helm which can turn a critical to a regular hit. Ajax is awesome. Ajax, a trade hero of the fallen Panhelios League, Ajax is bent on revenge. His placard adds to his prodigious tankiness. You've also got Jib Job. Jib Job the Alchemist. Oh, very fitting. He throws firebombs. He does AoE attacks, he does DOTs, he can heal. Jib Job the Goblin Alchemist can do it all, especially with a denial scroll to stop enemy magic. 
So the two characters that I'm playing today are not against type whatsoever. It's a little dude that heals guys and smashes the crap out of them. Brother Bolstan, healer extraordinaire, picks lock picks, useful for nabbing treasure. Super fantastic support character and really kind of key because with the monsters we face, having the ability to heal and throw out heals and keep your party up is really important in the game. I get to play Dalman the Dashing. Dalman the Dashing, a swashbuckler elf who is murderous when attacking from behind. The grappling hook lets him get anywhere he wants to go. He is so much fun. He's fast, he hits hard, he's a glass cannon, he's an elf. Does this sound like a 40k army I play? He can disappear, he can pop up, he can shiv you in the back. To attack the heroes are a host of NPC monsters who have minds of their own. Their artificial intelligence is distinct to each monster and includes unique powers and attacks. The monster's AI seeks to create a dynamic, responsive experience. They effectively interact with each other to attack the heroes in a coordinated fashion. In this scenario, because it's a high value scenario, it's a do or die scenario, the monsters are tougher than normal. We learn the hard way that the Biomancer of Ruin, who summons a Wormling, is a deadly foe. The monsters are here, and if the heroes cannot gain the vital information, their campaign could fail. They have to secure the crate in the far corner of the map or suffer ultimate defeat. Then we have three objectives. These are bonus objectives. If we can secure those before the end of the game, we'll get an extra draw on the treasure deck, which we'll explain that later. But it's basically more loot, gives us more XP. The idle heroes that are not coming on this mission or recovering from previous missions can perform tasks in the camp like raising morale or making items. The detail is amazing. Before we start deploying and playing this mission here, we do have to do some base building. I think this is a really cool part of it, the campaign yeah. base building aspect. Yeah, so we've already built the stockade, which is critical. It can stop really devastating random events from occurring where they go in and blow up your buildings. Now, we've also built the saloon, critical for morale. If your army runs out of morale, they flee, and that's it. Walls and beer, that's all we need. <laughs> We're good, man. We're good. So last turn, we started the merchant stall. So this turn, we flip it over. It is completed. It allows us to spend gold to buy items from the merchant stall. We can also sell loot that we don't want anymore to the merchant. So we can, we can build one more building? I'm thinking the blacksmith might be a great upgrade. Yeah, so the blacksmith will generate supplies every turn. Supplies are the resource you use to build buildings. We go ahead and spend our supplies. It takes one turn, it'll be ready next turn. Building the blacksmith was a great choice. Lots of great upgrades are now available. You learn to dread this as you play the game? Random event deck. <laughs> this could be good or bad or just plain fun. Crisis resolution martial arts type. Oh, and then a raid. A raid. They are coming. Raid is the worst one. Oh, no. no. Since we built the stockade, the stockade gets destroyed. Oh. But we ignore the result of the raid. The stockade has saved the base, but will need to be rebuilt. This could throw a wrench into future plans, chew up resources, and leave the base vulnerable to further attack. Now, luckily, next turn, we can rebuild the stockade, and the stockade, unlike other buildings, is an instant build. Some game concepts to go over real quick. The action economy is pretty basic and will be familiar to RPG players. Each player model gets two regular actions and a simple action. Free actions can also be taken, but not the same one twice in a single activation. Most regular actions can be taken twice, such as moving and shooting, charging and attacking. Line of sight is important, as you need to see to cast a spell, shoot or charge. Models can see 180 degrees in the direction they are facing. You can face any face or corner of the square you are occupying. The arc of action, where you can hit your foes, is the square directly in front of you and the squares flanking them. You cannot see behind you and gain advantage for attacking enemies from behind. Blood Throne uses D8s in dice pools. If you see a hit or critical on the dice, your hit roll is successful. If you see a skull, it's a critical failure and you miss no matter what. There are other symbols on the dice like swords that are added together for damage and swirls that can be converted to hits with advantage. That's it. Now we're ready to dive in to the mission. Start playing the game. Let's do it. Initiative first. You only need to set it up once, and then you use the board to track who is going next, friend or foe. Heavy armor and equipment slows you down and lowers your spot on the initiative board. So Dalnan, the rogue, has a feat that actually makes him have the highest possible initiative. He doesn't wear armor because he is just the dashing. Scavengers are light monsters. They go pretty quick. Goblin slingers are annoying, but they heal their buddies. Then we got the alchemist. 
The Inquisitor, now interestingly, the Inquisitor has medium armor, which is heavy, but he has two light weapons. The Berserker, we gotta look out for this guy. He's a tier four monster, which means he's the highest level monster outside of a boss. Easy to hit, but he can take a beating and he is devastating if he gets his hands on you. Witness of Malefica is a big eyeball wizard. You don't wanna get hit by his eye beam. He does all kinds of status effects. And then we have the Biomancer of Ruin, probably the most annoying monster in the game. And then we have the Shaman. He wears armor and has heavy claws. Priest, Butchers of Ruin, which are big slow monsters. And Caboose, the man himself, Ajax. Going Lasso isn't that bad, because it gives a chance for everybody else to buff you and do stuff before yeah. you get going. The next step is that the monsters get set up first. Seven on both sides and two in. So it's like an L-shaped appointment. So now the monsters are all deployed. Deployment is set by the mission and is performed in reverse initiative order. So Ajax gets to go first for once. Imagine an L that's two squares, so you can go to 12. So Ajax is gonna go as far forward hiding in this building right here, I think, because I can buff you being next to you. The Shaman is next. He's got some serious buffs. I'm gonna follow the team. Inquisitor wants to be in a position to block the wizards. Alchemist, jib job. He can make smoke happen. He can put poison. Yeah, he's awesome. And then lastly, El Suave. Dalman the Dashing dashes up next to Ajax. We're all good to go. Ready? Them? Well, okay. You guys ready to save the world? Yeah! Ow! So first up, down in the Dashing. Down in the, the rogue is amazing because he's fast. He's got the grappling hook. He can go over buildings. He can hide. He can step into the shadows. That's probably what I'm going to do is step into the shadows. So I'm gonna take the hidden status effect, going invisible, hiding. And so that was your first action. Now all characters get two standard actions, one simple action. Very familiar to anybody who's played any RPGs. My movement is six. I'm just gonna move a straight line, so each square is only gonna cost me one. Yeah. If I were to go diagonal, it would cost me two. And because I'm invisible, nobody can see me. Yeah, so the monster's AI won't target you because they can't see you. Next up, we have the monsters, they're scavengers. Nick, you're controlling them. You get to control heroes and monsters, so you're always engaged. You're not just sitting around waiting. Or if you want, one player can control the monsters and play as the DM. It's up to you. We have a really cool AI script. You just read it for every action. You follow the steps. The scavengers are treasure hunters, too. Their focus is on objectives. I'm going to start with this scavenger right here. I've got this flowchart. I'm going to just follow it along. And does this model currently have an objective? No, it doesn't. Is there a secured objective within reach range of this model? Nope, too far away from its movement. Is there an unsecured objective on the battlefield? Oh, of course it is. Then move towards and attempt to secure the nearest objective, avoiding engagement. So the nearest one is actually this one over here. So it's going to move straight towards it. It has a movement of five. So it's going to go one, two, three, four, five. For his next action, he'll move up okay. to the objective because it's the closest one, but he obviously can't open it yet because that would be another action. All right, Goblin Slingers. The Goblin Slingers are deceptively dangerous and can heal their allies. Super annoying. The nearest enemy, which is visible, would be over here. And then next, you're invisible, so he's going to go towards Ajax. Meh. Now, Jib Job, our alchemist, our goblin. <laughs> his bomb, his main ability, he can throw it as a free action. He only has a movement of four. He's not very fast. One, two, three. I'm gonna do my free action, alchemist bomb. I'm in range. Accuracy four versus evasion five. Leave Nyx with his action dice and one blue. You can focus once per turn as a simple action, and you can add an extra red die into the pool, which in this instance would take away that last blue one. He focuses to get rid of that last blue and rolls a hit. He blows the unfriendly goblin up for three damage. The number of swords on his damage dice. The nice thing about red dice is it ignores armor. The scavenger has nine health, so it's down three, so it's down to six wounds remaining. The cool thing about the alchemist is that you can choose to either set him on fire, douse him in acid, or poison him. The fun thing mechanically is that you could do another one later to put a different DOT on him. You could stack him. Oh. His follow-up action is alchemical concoctions, and he chooses a vial of acid to fling at the foe. He misses, despite a big pile of dice, so the Goblin Slinger survives the bombardment. The Inquisitor moves up and readies Inquisitorial Training, an ability that stops enemy abilities. Now you can see 180 degrees. If someone gets behind you, it's really bad. So that's why I have him aiming forward. 
he can see like that. So next up is the Berserker. The Berserker is a tier four monster. This guy is very scary. The Berserker lets out a cry of defiance. <laughs> Gonna give himself a bunch of health, seven extra health. And he moves in looking for something to crush. Here he comes. <laughs> We need to make sure we deal with this guy. The Witness of Malefica is next. This is a tier three monster, also has three yeah. actions. It casts a barrier and goes hero hunting and has true sight so he can see the invisible rogue. Now, since he's an arcane class, he will move cast. So he'll move into position to hit as many models as possible. And I'm gonna cast Malefica missiles. So first of all, he's gonna shoot three missiles, but there's two targets. So one target will take two missiles and that's gonna be the one with the lower defensive stat. The Inquisitor's Evasion is four. The Rogue's is seven. So I'm gonna take two missiles and the Rogue's gonna take one. So what is your metaphysics? It's metaphysics a six. Is so that's gonna give you six red. I have four blue. They cancel out and it leaves you with two red. So we have the hit dice and two red. Oh no, JT's dice are hot. A critical hit. So my damage is six white and I got a critical, so that's gonna replace two of the white with two red, but you have two armor and it's two shots, so that takes out all four white dice. For every successful action, your armor is applied to the damage dice. You start with the white dice. If you run out of white dice, you go to blue. Red dice represent extremely powerful attacks, critical hits, they cannot be reduced. Power in this case is three dice, right. which is, I don't add that twice even though I've hit twice. You only yeah. add power you once. Add power. So whenever you have multiple attacks within one action, it all counts as one attack. So now we roll the damage, count up the number of swords. One, two, three, four, six. Uh-oh, the Inquisitor is blasted for six damage. Go from 19 to 13 HP. Oh goodness, but now we attack the rogue. My yeah, metaphysics sorry. is six. The rogue's evasion is seven. So I start with my two orange, and then I go to six because that's my metaphysics. Yep. However, the rogue, if I could borrow those blue dice. Has seven. Has seven blue dice. The six is enough, even though I have seven, to cancel this out. Add and because one. I have an extra blue dice, it goes back in. This could make it critically miss. Yep. He hits him. It's just a hit though, so it's not that bad. Now if you wanted to, you could choose to dodge, which could avoid all damage, but when you do dodge, you can only move and defend. I see a guy here who wants to die next turn, so I'm not gonna dodge. You have uh, a whopping 15 hit points. You could die right here. Blasted for nine damage. Brutal. Nice. <laughs> I survived. Wait. Dalman the Dashing only has six hit points left. Now we have the most annoying model. The Biomancer of Ruin. Yeah, this is really simple. Because he's only tier two, he only gets two actions. Yeah. And summoning is two actions. Yeah. The Biomancer's eyes roll up in his head and his pet Wormling is brought forth. A fell summonation. And it goes in an adjacent square. You summon a worm? I summon a war bear, sir. Kor the Shaman responds by summoning the war bear. He has his own monster. That's his turn, and on to the priest. Blood is already dripping from some of his friends. The priest has work to do. Ajax will receive a celestial blessing, making the tank extra tanky. He can move and cast, and does a healing touch on the Inquisitor. Since you move cast, you're going against the static two blue. Metaphysics three. So then you're gonna roll action dice plus one red, and you just need one hit or a crit. There nice. it is, baby. So the healing touch does four red dice plus my power dice. My power dice are two, so it's gonna be six. Eight back to the Inquisitor. Shazam, baby, I'm full. So if you're going up two squares, which these buildings are two, costs one extra point of movement to get on the roof. So it's one, two, three, four. And next up we have the Butchers of Ruin, these monsters are slow, but they're really tough. They hit hard, they can eat you. The Butchers of Ruin, ooh, my favorite. These ugly mutants are hungry. They stumble forward, moaning for flesh to consume. Ajax the fighter to save the day. Ajax now makes his entrance, clanking around the corner. He spies a goblin and charges into the fray. I'm gonna use into the fray. Basically I get extra movement, but I also do extra charge damage. He can knock him down and put him out of the fight right here. Because it's a charge action, I also get to fight at the same time. And because of into the fray, I get all sorts of bonuses. So the goblin's fortitude is three. Your accuracy <laughs> is three. All right, so I just get the two orange dice. But now don't forget, you have an advantage. Which means I can change a dice to a hit or a crit. <laughs> With advantage, he has scored a critical hit. When you have an advantage, you can activate symbols and you get advantage from being behind someone, charging, flanking. The critical replaces a white damage dice with a red dice, which has more damage potential. So I did nine damage. And the goblin is knocked prone. 
That finishes turn one. The fight is on. The heroes are already wounded and will need to coordinate to survive. Right, that's yeah. me. The rogue goes again. Dalman runs over and stabs that scavenger right in the liver and its death wail reverberates across the battlefield. So now that would be eight XP. The surviving scavengers are next. They are going for the treasure as usual. They want to open the treasure chests, but they're all trapped. First, he has to try and disarm it. So you look at his finesse. He's got a finesse of two. So it's a static four against him. So his two cancel out the two blue dice and I roll two blue dice with the orange dice. And I got double skull, so he fails. Disarm fails. The trapped treasure goes boom. <laughs> he takes three more damage, down to three wounds remaining. One treasure is now open, as he had an action left to pry the box open. It's just sitting there, ready sitting for there. someone to grab it. The other scavenger fails as well. More boom. He's down to six. This is great. Then the goblins go next. His AI says, run away. So he's gonna turn and try and move as far as possible to get away. Ajax gets an attack of opportunity as he disengages. I get my two orange dice normally, three di red dice for my oh. accuracy. So my evasion is three. So we cancel out. Now you get one advantage because you're hitting me in the back. Yeah. Just two red dice? Ha, got a hit. He only has two hit points. Four power dice and four white dice. The four white dice is from your sword. The four power dice is from his power characteristic. Ah, you're dead. 13 damage. The other goblin slinger checks his flow chart, winds up his sling. A bullet for the Inquisitor whistles wide. Then he's gonna move towards his buddy who needs to get you. Now for the alchemist. Jib job. Now I have a lot of opportunities here. I can really explode some stuff. Jib job is making Nick so happy. It's bombs for days with this little guy. This guy's gonna run away with some of our loot. Yeah. So I demand. You demand. You don't demand yeah, of Jib right. job. Jib job demands of you. All right, I humbly request, sir. <laughs> A poison alchemical concoction is hurled, but sails wide. Dodgy scavenger. You have like a 90% chance to hit and you failed it twice. <laughs> I guess that one was a dud. An alchemist bomb grenade is a free action, but he needs to move into position to get a nice AOE into the midst of the monsters. My accuracy against the evasion, which evasion do I use? You use the evasion for every single guy, but you have to roll one at a time. Boom, the berserker and scavenger get caught in the blast. I did not hit the butcher of ruin. The berserker barely feels it. He has extra health remaining, but the scavenger is nearly killed, down to one hit point left, so close. Now the inquisitor. Kalf digs in his pouch and flings Jabberwock Dander at the Roaring Berserker. Focusing and using his diabolic luck for advantage, he misses. The luck kicks in and the swirl is turned to a hit. Six damage and confusion. The Berserker cannot use special abilities until the Inquisitor activates next turn. Kalf then runs for cover. That Berserker is scary. Berserker is up. Is this model engaging a hero? Yes or no? It's not, so it charges the nearest visible target. If, oh no, he's going to the priest. Here he comes. The priest looks juicy. A walk becomes a running charge and one brutal blow does 11 damage. All right, so I got seven left. Kalt is like, you got this, buddy? <laughs> this guy's got six power. The, the, oh yeah, this guy's an absolute monstrosity. Every turn he heals himself. Let's just hope little man lives. This guy has 44 health? Wait, no, he gets three actions, doesn't he? He gets a third action and goes to mash Brother Bolstan into divine paste. A massive damage roll. This will need to be dodged for him to survive. We're gonna dodge. Because if you dodge, you avoid all damage. However, you can't do anything in your next action except move and defend. You just make one dodge roll. So it's versus a static of nine blue dice. So it's really difficult to do. And then you add your finesse. Two. I have seven blue dice. Essentially, if you fail this, you're dead. There's two skulls in each one of those dice? Yep. So you need a hit and no skulls. Not if dead. we fail this, our priest dies. Yeah. You did it! You did it! JT! There's not a single skull on the all the blue dice and a head on the orange dice. Olstan manages to dive aside before the strike lands and be forced to defend or move next round. He followed the five Ds. Yeah. Dodge, 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 dodge. Unfortunately, now it's the witness of Malefica. The witness of Malefica fires his missiles at Ajax and brother Bolstan. But the cool thing is once you start dodging, you can dodge every action. Ajax is hit and takes six damage. Ajax is down to 19 wounds. Olstan is hit twice. This will kill him easily. Can you do this again? Do it! 
You did it again? No way! Oh, he dodges again. That big hat has room to hide in, it seems. He's Neo in the Matrix, dude. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm a gnome, so it's more like, you know, just kind of... They just all went over his head. <laughs> a move action. Then he shoots his eye beam, zapping poor Ajax again for two damage and enfeeblement. Ajax now has zero power, and Nick is sad. You are now enfeebled. I'm enfeebled? Four. That's a really bad debuff. So instead of rolling four white, four blue, when you hit somebody, it'll be four white, zero blue. All right, so next up we got the Biomancer. But now he's got his Wormling on the table, so the Wormling will always go first. The reason why the Wormling always goes first is he has a chance to save his master. The Biomancer's Worm dives into the ground and will ambush next round. The Biomancer steps up and casts Arcane Vortex at Ajax. It's a hard life at the tip of the spear. Poor Ajax is about to get debuffed to high holy hell. The Vortex hits, hobbling the Noble Warrior and doing another three damage, only 14 health left. Now you have no power and you move half speed. The Shaman Core now activates. That bear needs to do some work and fast. Ajax can't do this all himself. So the Shaman is gonna activate. He's going to cast Spirit Claws on the bear. Spirit Claws blessing on the bear makes his claws magical. And that is a blessing. Blessings last all game until they're removed. So I'm gonna move cast this one. Core focuses and casts Elephant's Agility on the Berserker. My metaphysics is, is a solid two. Come on! Ooh, you did it? Yeah, yeah That should make him easier to hit. The bear charges and both claws hit. The berserker has no armor and is mauled for 11 damage. Down to 30. Whew, he's a brick. Killing him will be quite the task. So now it's the priest. Unfortunately, he can't do a whole lot. So in this instance, what you want to do is go full defense. Okay. So it's a full round action. Brother Bolston goes full defense, crawling up into that big hat. If he runs, the berserker will probably kill him. This full defense action grants four to all his defense stats and hopefully will keep him alive which puts my evasion from three up to seven, seven, which means the AI for the monster script is probably gonna attack the bear who does not have an evasion seven. Yeah. Who's next? Oh, the Butcher of Ruin. They just go at the nearest target and attack, but he's going to, to charge Ajax with his lumbering charge special ability. A Butcher of Ruin lumbering after Ajax. So this targets Fortitude, which is uh, not great. Accuracy is five, but your fortitude is seven because you have a buff yeah. on you from the priest. Good job, priest. So that means I'm rolling two blue instead, and the blue are negative in yeah. action rolls. And I miss. Second action, he's just going to punch you. So then this attacks is your evasion, but your evasion is the same as your fortitude. And I missed. Ajax is hard to hurt, and he's hard to hit. The other butcher goes for Jib Job, Cleaver arcing towards his bulbous head. So then what's the fortitude on Jib Job? A million. That's uh, pretty four. good. Four. Roll with plus one because my accuracy is five. I'm one above yours. And that is a hit. Yeah. If someone attacks you, yep. you can choose to parry. The weapon that you parry with gains the parried status effect. You can't attack with it on your next turn. But I'm not gonna plan to do it. I'm gonna throw bombs. Exactly. So I'm gonna take my stiletto. <laughs> You roll half as many blue dice as I roll total dice. Light dice cancel out. You have one armor. So I think I might have canceled out all your attacks. A neat parry reduces the damage to two. Great roll, Nick. Down to 16 for the little guy. So for every one sword cancels a one sword, a two sword cancels a two sword. All right, so now it does Ajax get to go. Ajax activates and heals two health up to 16. Untiring, but hobbled and feeble, and surrounded by brutal monsters, it's hero time. Ajax needs to keep these monsters busy, so he will go full defense and hopefully tank the barrage of fire. And then the cool thing is, is when you defend or full defend, you have no rear arc for defensive, so uh, nobody can hit you in the back. His evasion is going to be 11. His uh, fortitude is going to be 11. His will is going to be Seven. Plus he can block with a shield too. Turn three will be pivotal. The party is wounded and engaged. Two members are dodging and the bear is wrestling a berserker. They need to break the line to get to the vital information. So now we're on turn three and the rogue is up. We have a cunning plan. plan. I can't get invisible and get away from him. You could choose to delay and then get three uninterrupted actions on the next turn. The only issue I'm concerned with that is then he's gonna get continually enfeebled and we need him up. I'm going to use my dash ability. The rogue is going for the rear. A big move and a dash puts him behind the witness and he flings a dart as a free action to pull down the barrier. Success! 
the barrier is down, and the fell beast is poisoned. A great move, especially if he survives to grab the objective. And then when he activates, he's gonna take damage. And then the barrier will shatter. So next up is the scavengers. First action, takes the objective. The scavengers nab treasures and make for the exit. Gotta run them down or those objectives will be stolen. Goblin slingers, there's only one left. The slinger heals the scavenger, aiding his escape. For five? So now he's just gonna move to be within medium range. Then we get to do the alchemist. And the alchemist is gonna use his sneaky git ability to be able to withdraw from combat and not have an issue. One, two, three, four. He's no longer stunned, which is great. He can't do anything else because he only has one action, but can do one last thing. He has a free bomb, might as well throw it. He's only got one wound left, so I'm gonna kill him. Jib Job spies the fleeing scavenger and lobs him a grenade. Alchemical bomb with focus hits him and boom! You literally can't do less than one damage. The scavenger collapses and the bag treasure tumbles to the ground. This is mission critical intel, the rest are treasures. Inquisitor, I misplayed it last time. I apologize, guys. Fortunately, I think we're gonna have to leave these guys to deal with the berserker. Fudge! So one, two, three, four. <laughs> one, two, three. Now he has a reach weapon, so I could stop there as part of my charge, but I want to get closer. So he's gonna go all the way in. He's gonna use burning judgment, which will set him, the opponent on fire in addition to normal damage. My accuracy is three. Your evasion is one. So I'm gonna be rolling the action dice plus two action modifier dice. I have two advantage, one for charging, one for rear arc, and I have three advantage actually for also gang up because there's two of us on this guy. Burning judgment. The Inquisitor's whip cracks and a great roll results in two criticals. I rolled a swirl, a hit, and a crit. I'm gonna use one of my advantage to turn this also into a crit because for every crit that I have, I replace one white die with a red die. Red dice, ignore armor. And he has armor too. So now the armor still blocks my power dice, so those go down to nothing, but I get two red and I get an extra one for charging. Yeah. So I do five damage to him and he's on fire. He's on fire! Unfortunately, those guys have a lot of wounds. 19 wounds remaining. Now everybody clinch. It's the berserker time? It's berserker time. This cry of defiance gives him health back. He loses confused. Five blue dice to see what happens. Automatic success, woo! He only heals five, so he's up to 35 health. And then his second action, he will attack with the lowest evasion. So he attacks the bear. This is the fight the berserker wanted. The war bear, a worthy opponent. Multiple hits incoming. Hey, yeah. PETA, it's just a game. Hits with a critical. This is the first, still the first action, but it's just the second attack of the first action. Also hits, so a hit and a critical so far. So the bear has no armor, so that's gonna be eight, and his power is Six? The bear might want to dodge. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and dodge. I believe he failed. Uh, one, 12, 13. He lived! Yeah. But then he attacks you again. It's a hit, and the second one is also a hit. There you go, dodge away. The bear dodges, but fails. The Berserker does extreme damage, rolling dice upon dice. 13 damage pummels the bear, destroying it completely. You served well, Bear. Yeah. Don't worry, you'll be summoned again. Witness. Of Malefica. The witness cackles as the bear is spent back to the spirit realm, but his barrier is broken by the poison, so he attempts to cast his barrier spell again. This allows a sneak attack of opportunity from the rogue. Big damage for 17, but now the barrier is back up. He has six remaining, and now he's going to attempt to cast magic missile. Then he gets another sneak attack. But you just need to hit him. What's that do? All right, so you've broken his barrier again. But he does successfully cast Magic Missile. Ajax is tagged first from the volley of missiles for two, and Kalf takes six. A defense action will end its turn and buff its defenses. Biomancer and Worm. He goes behind the person with the lowest evasion. Oh boy, the Wormling pops up next to the Shaman. Buttering attack, accuracy is four, and his evasion is one or two. One, so he'd wrap around him and constrict him and then it keeps him from doing anything useful. Miss, Wormling, miss, miss, Wormling, miss. Oh, the whim Wormling misses. Now he'll just attack normally. Six damage from the Wormling. Now for Biomancy. Arcane Vortex catches Ajax and Kalf, but misses both. Now for the Leaping Curse. This is the bad one. The rogue is the target. A hit. The alchemist attempts to stop the spell with a denial scroll, but he fails. Three damage, blinded and silenced. Dalman only has three hit points left. A dire state. Shaman to the rescue. A barrier for the priest. Good show. Now Kara's gonna eat the worm. 
Two hits mean 10 damage. He heals himself with Hunger of the Beast for six health. Power move. So the worm is down to six. Priest. Brother Bolstan runs from the Berserker, and the Shaman's barrier protects him from the attack of opportunity. And he had, we don't have to go any further. Yeah. Breaks your barrier, but does no damage. His move and cast, Healing Burst, goes off. This is really gonna turn things around. Olstan up to 12, Kalf heals six to full, and now Ajax has 19 hit points left. Huge. Now a charge into the Butcher of Ruin. Reach will help. My accuracy is three. His evasion is one. Two orange, two red. And you have three advantage. Rear arc, charge, double team. I just, I'm flipping dice is what you're saying. Oosh! Oh, baby. So you can turn that into a crit, yep. and that's it. So you normally do four, he's armor two. I have armor piercing as well. So armor piercing lets you activate a crit, but you already had three advantage. Do a ton of damage. He doesn't have a lot of wounds left, does he? 19. He's also on fire. Weird. Six damage. Brings the butcher to 13 wounds. The butchers now activate. Two fire damage. Down to 11. Now he goes for a bite. So now Kalth is gonna use his inquisitorial training. It's a reactive action. He's gonna try and block your special attack. And he succeeds, held back by demonic decree. So then he just lost an action. That's what makes Cal special. Yep. So now he, with his second action, he's gonna attack you. Full defense, I still have that. The cleaver misses, Ajax standing tall. <laughs> the other butcher charges Jib Job and smacks him from the rear. His accuracy is five. My fortitude is four. So I'm one above you, so I get one positive modifier dice. The, the crit only counts as a hit, unless I have advantage. Monsters don't use advantage. So you have armor one, so it goes to four damage. I am power three plus one for charging. So jib job, ooh, ouch. A big 13 damage puts him on death's door. Jib job has two wounds left. <laughs> the follow-up could kill him. He cannot dodge because he is attacked in the rear. Dire. Well, if I die, I go down in a blaze of explosions. So my XC is five, your evasion is eight. That gives me three negative modifier dice. If you hit me, I'm dead. Oh, good, I survived. Critical failure. Ajax now, two health up to 21. <laughs> what a tank. Ajax loses all my buffs. I'm still hobbled. I'm going to kill him. First attack into the butcher. He's evasion one, your accuracy three, and you get plus one advantage because of gang up. Boom. Critical, titanic might, adds damage for days. Add plus two to my power. So I'm gonna get six blue dice. Your sword would go to two because he's armor two. But since you critted, you turn one into a red. 12 damage fells the ugly brute. The tides are turning, baby. For my next action, I'm gonna use shielded advance. It basically combines movement and the defense action. So I'm gonna get a higher defensive uh, stats, plus I get rid of my hobbled, and then I get to move my full five. So you can save him, or you can go for the objective. Go for the objective! Oh, one, two, three, four, five. Turn four. The heroes had a great round, but they're not out of it yet. The Berserker is still doing his thing. All right, turn four, Rogue. Can you end this thing? Since he defended, he has no rear arc, he can be backstabbed. He's harder to hit, but he only has six hit points. The Prancing Rogue skewers the witness, but the thing dodges. Use your second attack. Another hit, and no dodge this time. He puts it down to two hit points. Oh, it's so close. And it is still poisoned. That rogue is nasty. The last scavenger runs away with his treasure. I think that mithril shirt is gone. The goblin slinger slings at cousin Jib Job. He misses! That means he hits the butcher. And he does four damage to his buddy. And then he's gonna move to try and stay at medium range. All right, the alchemist is going to defend, full defend, and just try to hold on to survive. Defend or full defense? You can only defend, he only has one action. Jib Job defends himself, duck and cover. Inquisitor? The Inquisitor leaves the Shaman to the tender attention of the Berserker and charges the Biomancer in the rear. Burning judgment, seven damage, and he is lit on fire. He's down to 12 remaining. Well, now my man, the Berserker. Ah, up to 40 some odd health, and he charges the Shaman. A flurry of blows forces a dodge move. Freya, Thor, anyone? No. 16 damage. What are you down to? Four. Another dual hit. No dodge, and he is forced to use Tenacious. This is one of the best heritage abilities 
in the game. Yes! It's called Tenacious. Because I'm a Mountain Dwarf, I'm extra tough. When an attack would kill me for the first time, I play this card, and I instead go down to one HP, I get stunned, and I don't die. Boom, son! Yeah. The witness activates and survives his poison. I I let you roll. He had two HP left. Full defense from the eye. He's no longer poisoned. Now for the Biomancer. Yeah, so the worm, he's on the table. He's not constricting a hero. So he goes off the table, but he'll come back. So now he's engaged and he's on fire. So let's resolve the fire. Ah! Two red dice. He takes three damage. Three. So he's from 12, he's down to nine. The Biomancer turns to run. A crack of the whip from Kalf snaps three damage off him. Arcane Vortex targets the Inquisitor. Inquisitorial training blocks that spell. I have one action. The Shaman casts a barrier. This will slow the Berserker down, but probably not save him. A noble sacrifice. Ha! As, unless the priest comes back and heals me. Jim Job is also in trouble. When you're playing the campaign too, you gotta think about not getting guys knocked out so that you can use them in the next fight. Exactly. The issue is, even with Barrier up, the amount of attacks that he has, yeah, he's, he's probably dead anyway. So I'm gonna move cast Healing Touch. Jib Job is healed for 11. Now up to 14 hit points. Yeah, thank you. Now I don't have to move cast because I'm gonna Winds of Judgment. Wings of Judgment next, fully healing his goblin ally. The Butcher takes four damage from the spell. The Butcher of Ruin hacks at Jib Job. The goblin parries with his stiletto. No damage. It's time for Ajax. Ajax heals again, nearly full health. A long charge into the Biomancer. I'm also gonna use Spirited Action to give myself advantage on this. Now you'll have two advantage because you charged. Accuracy is needed to slash for 11 damage. Twice it has had off. We look like we were gonna lose and now we're feeling pretty confident. All right, turn five. I think we got this, guys. All right, I'm just gonna shove this dude now. The rogue misses his first swing, but the dagger lands and the witness flashes through the atrocities it has committed as it meets eternity. He's gone! Yeah! The objective is now clear, but there still may be a price to pay. The Goblin Slinger tags his cousin for six damage. Jib Job down to 12. Jib Job dances in the Butcher's embrace. Full defense as he waves his parrying stiletto. He wants to live so that he can survive for future, for future campaign. Kalf runs down the fleeing Slinger earning judgment and big damage. That goblin doesn't have long for this world. Berserker! Smashing through the barrier. The shaman cannot dodge. So then his second action, he'll just attack you again. And he hits. His other one, his other attack also hits. Dodge it again. I failed. So close. I failed. I'm dead. You don't need to roll. <laughs> it's just so all the time. 20 billion dead. Wow. He just, he did his job. He kept him contained. He sacrificed his bear and himself. So now he has bloodlust. So then he gets to make a free move when he knocks someone out towards the nearest model. So he's gonna go towards the priest or five. The Wormling is back. Revenge is a fish best served cold. And Brother Bolstan is the target of the ambush. Two hits, he is down to eight and now pinned. He is constricted. Bolstad wriggles free. Combat casting, Wings of Judgment spell, heals Jib Job and dings the Butcher to three. The Butcher is hungry. The bite misses and so does the Cleaver. Jib Job dancing. Ajax, now Ajax only really has one thing to do. He's gonna move up to that chest and say it's mine and try to open it. All right, any skulls that it blows up in his face. He does it! Ajax manages to open the main objective and escape the trap. Just kind of rip the lid clean off there, I figure. Guess what, chicken butt? Last turn, you open the chicken box. Do? The rogue scoops the main objective and poof, is gone. I'm just gonna stay there and turn invisible. The burning goblin slinger dies screaming as the fire damage over time consumes him. Jib Job runs away from the butcher and dives for the treasure, scooping it up. But you get smacked as you run away. Yes. He missed. I wonder what he found. The inquisitor turns around and charges the wormling. Judge that worm. The Wormling is too quick, a miss. The Berserker is not done yet. He is running down the priest. A massive blow fells Brother Bolstad. Oh, boo! Oh. I use my last action to try to whack the Inquisitor. A whip parry keeps him alive. The Wormling has better things to do now that the dome is dead, and he crawls away. All right, the Butcher, he's gonna use his special attack. So I'm gonna try and deny his special charge. So Lumbering Charge. 
I do. So then he's just going to try and charge normally. He doesn't have enough movement. And then the fighter does some break dancing in the corner. Oh, the fighter does like uh, victory laps and victory push-ups. He does, he does the floor. No, no, he does victory <laughs> push-ups yeah. and jumping jacks. He's like, <laughs> all right, guys, good job. Better. Well done. Yeah, did it. There we Woo. go. We only got one bonus objective, but as you can see, the, the key missions are really difficult. So we had to sacrifice some of our heroes. We did manage to secure the final objective. We did get one treasure card. We're gonna draw one. So we're at average party level three, so we can get up to level three loot. And do it. And it's a level three. Ooh. Skill manual, skill class only. This model gains one class skill when equipped with this magic item. That's really good. It's super good. So every character can take one consumable and one accessory. The consumables tend to be what you buy from the merchant. Yeah. Accessories tend to be magic or found items. So any skill class like Jib Job can wear, the, he can keep this book and he gets one extra skill card. And because we won this one, we have delayed the incoming armies and yes. healed our, helped our armies quite a bit. We had three turns onto the reinforcement clock. That means we get three more chances to go get side quests, do fun we'll stuff. Those ones. Yeah. The rogue was the MVP. The rogue definitely was what saved us from defeat. And the, the shaman's barrier, saving the priest so I could get out of combat after making two ridiculous dodge rolls. <laughs> Reese, thank you so much for teaching us this game. That was a lot of fun, and I can't wait to continue this campaign. This isn't the only game that we're gonna be releasing on YouTube, so, so please check out game number two in which we're gonna play player versus player game of a whole slew of characters. I'm really excited for that. I might know one of the guys that's playing it. Please check this out on Kickstarter. It's gonna be in the description below. So until you see us next time in the sinister world of Sheol, play on! on. What a game. I thought they were dead, but it turns out only the shaman and the priest went down. Jib Job has a new toy, and the rogue snagged the big win. The razor's edge between victory and defeat is in your hands in the sinister world of Jail. Thank you so much to Reese, Nick, and JT for making this such a wonderful experience. Blood Throne has grabbed my attention, and I am going to be painting up my band of heroes as soon as I can. Tune in next time as our players go head to head in intense PVP action. Check out the link in the description below for information on how to get your hands on Blood Throne.